glad to have you back and I'm going to share something a little different with you today. I'm going to start a can of Diet Coke. There we go. The elixir of life. I want you to look at this can for a second. There's an awful lot to be learned uh, about structures and structural mechanics from a Coke can. And uh, I think you all know what these look like. Here's one maybe you haven't seen before. I'm going to put this up close so you can see that there's a hole clean through this. All right, that's pretty cool. That's what I did it with. That's a ping pong ball. So what I'm going to tell you now is how to shoot one of these through one of these. Okay, what we're going to do here, this is a very interesting physics experiment. I'll go through all the safety warnings later, okay? We're going to get that ping pong ball going something in the neighborhood of, uh, let's see, 200 and so meters a second, uh, 600, 700 feet a second. All right? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a tube, all right, plastic tube. Now, in the U.S., uh, you can use uh, one and a half inch Schedule 40 PVC plumbing pipe. Now the one I'm going to show you here in a little bit is actually clear plastic that I bought from an industrial supplier. But it's basically just plastic pipe. Okay? I'm going to put a ping pong ball in it. Right there. Okay? And I'm going to seal the ends of this tube. Okay? Now I'm going to do it with packing tape. Just plain old clear tape like the post office uses. And I'm going to hook up a vacuum pump right there. And I'm going to draw all the air out, and I mean all of it. This doesn't work unless you're at 99.9 something percent vacuum, okay? So you can't use just a standard roughing pump. You've got to use a high vacuum pump, and you've got to go down to some fr small fraction of atmospheric pressure. 1% atmospheric pressure is probably too much. You need 0.1%. Now, fortunately, this isn't very hard to do, okay? So I'm going to draw all the air out. Now, if I were to throw this ball as hard as I could throw it, it wouldn't go very far. It would slow down an awful lot because there's what? Lots of surface area, lots of aerodynamic drag, not much mass. Okay? F equals MA, the aerodynamic forces are large compared to the inertial forces to the, compared to MA. It slows down very quickly. Okay? But it doesn't weigh very much. Mass is very low. It's on the order of two and a half grams. Okay? So if I draw the air out, and then I puncture this seal right there. It goes away. And atmospheric air rushes in. Okay, well the pressure there is 101.3 kPa or 14.7 psi, if you insist on using English units. Okay, and there's a whole lot of surface area. There's a whole lot of well, it's really cross-sectional area that we're interested in. Okay, and so the force on this ball works out to about, it's a little more, it's 127 newtons, but let's call it 125, okay, just to make the numbers nice and round. 125 newtons. That is an awful lot of force on this little ball, okay? Big force, low mass, lots of acceleration. Ping pong balls don't go very fast because of the aerodynamic resistance, right? There's no air in here. There's nothing to slow it down. So this takes off down this barrel. The only problem is now, there's a seal at this end, right there. The ball's going to hit that. Well, since we're using a ping pong ball and plumbing pipe, we don't have an especially tight fit between the ball and the barrel. Right? So a little puff of air gets past this ball. So what's going on down here, let's... Uh, let's draw the ball closer to this end, okay? There is just a little bit of air up in there. There's a little puff of air ahead of the ball. And this ball is really moving now, okay? That little puff of air gets compressed by the ball and pops that seal out of the way. The seal goes just in time for the ball to get there. Now, I've shot uh, pictures of this at 10,000 frames a second, and you can watch the tape at the end expand out like that burst, and right about the time it burst, there's the ball right there moving, okay? Um, this is how this works. Now, 
I didn't invent this. I found this in a journal somewhere. At the end of the clip here, I'll list some references so you can go check this out on your own. So this is how it's going to work. Now, let's do a quick, quick uh, back of the envelope kind of calculation. F equals MA, right? Last I checked, that was still true. So F over M equals A. Well, if M is 2.5 grams, and that's 0 0.0025 kilograms, and force is 125, this turns out to be 50,000 meters per second squared, about 5,000 Gs, 5,100 Gs more or less, right, starting right there. Now, it doesn't stay, the acceleration isn't constant, because as this ball moves farther and farther down the barrel, you're also trying to accelerate the slug of air behind it. Air weighs a lot, especially compared to a ping pong ball. Okay, when you get enough air in there, it starts acting, it, it, it's, it's almost the same mass as the ping pong ball. So what you're going to get, if you uh, want to do the calculations or if you want to maybe even make the measurement yourself, okay, if that's the distance down the barrel and that's the velocity, what you'll get is something that looks like that. And this is with barrel length. When you get to about there, Adding barrel length doesn't help much, and that's about two meters, okay? Once the barrel's longer than about two meters, it's really not doing you much good anymore, okay? So I'm going to stop right now, and the second part of this clip, we're going to go over to uh, a room that has a, a long bench in it, and I'm going to set this up and show you what it looks like when you shoot it. Okay, here we are in a different room that's got some nice long benches in it. And there's the whole setup right there. There's, there's really not much to it. Let's walk down the tube here and I'll show you what's going on. There is the empty Coke can. And believe me, you want it to be empty. Whatever liquid is in there is going to get atomized. Uh, so you want it as empty as you can get it. And if nothing else, at least rinse it out with water so you can get atomized water rather than atomized backwash out of it when the ball hits. Um, definitely you do not want to hit a full can. I've done it. You definitely want to do it outside if you insist. The physics change dramatically when the, ball, when the can is full. It's much more like a, a rigid object than an empty can is. Alright, there's the, the muzzle of the barrel. That's where the ping pong ball is going to come out. And that plastic plate there is just a piece of Lexan or polycarbonate or something and it's uh, the, the barrel set in it and the plate is there partly to support the barrel but partly to give the tape uh, surface to uh, bond to because leaks are important. You cannot have any leaks anywhere in this tube. Remember, you're trying to get a very, very high vacuum and even a small leak will uh, uh, stop the show. So I've got a clear tube here. I bought this from an industrial supply place but uh, typically people use the white uh, PVC tubing. Here's the uh, breech. That's where the, the ball is going to go in here in a second. Now remember, there's nothing in, uh, different about the muzzle and breech. This thing doesn't care which way it shoots. So while it's pumped down, you don't ever want to be in line with the barrel. Okay? If the tape fails, it could fire in either direction. And I, I would think it would hurt. Okay, so there's the uh, a two, a nice high vacuum pump. And I've got it, so here, let me turn it on. I've got a, uh, a gauge here. It'll tell us what the pressure is right now. I haven't zeroed it out yet, but that's basically reading zero vacuum. Okay. Now, one last thing. Let's let's look at the uh, at some safety things here. All right. Number one, never point this thing at anyone. Now, it's got a, a, a effective range of about two meters. It's the ball spins when it comes out, so when you shoot it down the hallway, it hits the wall. It doesn't go down the hallway. Um, but absolutely, never point this thing at anybody. Even though it's a ping pong ball, it could hurt. Um, observers stay away from the barrel axis, okay? Don't look down the barrel to see if the thing is loaded. Never, when the thing is pumped down, never have anybody uh, in line with the barrel. Okay, earplugs, definitely earplugs. When you, when you burst that seal, it's really loud. Use a backstop. It's surprising how fast that ping pong ball comes out and you can shoot it clean through a cardboard box, no problem. Finally, don't be stupid. I mean, this isn't a weapon, but you you know, it's it's a it shoots a ping pong ball out pretty fast. Um, be be safe. Don't point it at anybody. Don't do stupid stuff. Okay, I don't want to hear about it. All right, so I'm going to stop uh, the, the tape again or the, the video again here, and I'm going to get everything ready to go and start pumping down, and then we'll show you what goes on. 
Okay, I'm ready to pump the tube down now, and I thought it was probably a good idea to mention some logistics. Now, I've sealed the end on the, the uh, muzzle, and I drew a little spiral on it with just a marker. The tape's going to come off, and it's nice to be able to tell what piece of tape you're looking at when you find it. Okay. The ball is in the tube right now. nice part about having a clear tube is you know whether it's loaded or not. And there's tape on the other end. Okay, now... I trimmed the tape on the muzzle end so it's just a little bit bigger than the hole because we want it to stick, but we don't want it to stick so bad that it uh, doesn't want to come off when the time comes. On the breech end here, you can see that I've got an extra, a lot of tape on it. We're just trying to punch a hole in this, and so it doesn't matter how big that is. Now, the tape itself, this is just a, uh, a roll of uh, packaging tape. It's three inches wide, or 76 millimeters, and I got this from one of the industrial supply places. I've never found the three inch wide stuff at an office store or anything like that. It's all two inches wide. Two inch tape doesn't work. One other thing I wanted to tell you about is the ping pong ball itself. I didn't know this, but ping pong balls come two different sizes. They come 38 and 40 millimeters. You want the 40 millimeter ones, at least with this tube. You want to fit reasonably tight, but you don't want to have to cram it down the tube. You want uh, a little bit of air to get past, but not a lot. The other one is that if you have a chance to buy match grade ping pong balls, do it. This is a three star match grade ping pong ball, and we get them in boxes of 144. Okay, the gun is pumping down now, and this is the uh, air pressure in PSI. One of my students set it to PSI. So in a second here, when I get close to 14.7, I'm going to uh, puncture the seal back there with my pocket knife. And I'm going to set it up. There's the ball. I'm going to come out there. And let's just set the camera right there so you can see what's going on. That'll, that'll give you a pretty good view. Well, there's what it looks like when we're done. Here's the ball. Now, a lot of times, these come out in just pieces. It's, it's, it's one of the reasons you use the uh, match-grade balls is they have a thicker wall, and sometimes they can hold together. But don't be surprised if the ball comes out just in, in little pieces. There's the bottom of the can, and you can see where the, the impact was. And there's the top of the can, and that ripped clean off. So that was a pretty good shot. Um, typically it's not too hard to go through two cans and one time I've gone through three cans. There's a lot of interesting physics here and uh, I want you to study this, maybe even try it out, but be safe, learn a lot, and don't do anything stupid. Okay, finally, here's some references you might want to look up if you want to learn more about this. These are the two references I learned, uh, I used when I was trying to figure out how to make this thing work. I forgot which one of these, I think it might have been this one, was one that first introduced me to the, to the concept of this. I didn't design it. Um, here's one out of the American Journal of Physics. It's a pretty accessible explanation on how the, the, the basic physics of it work. And here's a little bit more of an in-depth exploration. I worked on this one with some other folks and we show some experimental details from a couple different devices we've built along with a computational fluid dynamics analysis of what's going on as the ball launches down the barrel. And it shows that there's shock waves all over the place. There's a very interesting uh, set of uh, fluid, mechanic, fluid mechanics uh, phenomenon going on as this thing fires. Okay?